Uh, just a few words about uh, OptInvent. Uh, okay, we, I, I'm the CTO of the company. OptInvent is um, a hardware company building uh, AR glass or smart glasses. Uh, we have actually a booth uh, at the show. Please, if you cross by our booth, we have a, a product or a tool and uh, other uh, concept also. Uh, my talk today is about the hardware and more specifically about the display technology that is key for such kind of uh, uh, devices. And I will focus uh, mainly on the optical technology because the optical technology is the basic for uh, the display itself. Uh, so here is the summary of uh, my talk. Uh, I will start first by uh, the basic ergonomic parameters. Uh, since uh, the glasses or the HMD head mounted display are wear, uh, wearable device, uh, the ergonomy is very important. Then I talk about the photometric parameters uh, like brightness. Uh, I will also uh, show you uh, what technology are used today, what optical technology are used for AR and VR. Then I will focus on what we call AR technology, mean transparent um, smart glasses, uh, and uh, detail the advantage and drawback. I will give you also our vision, my uh, personal vision, on the trend in optical technology for smart glasses. Uh, for the future, and also some few words about the light field approach. So uh, let's start with basic ergonomy. Don't be <laughs> afraid of this drawing, which is uh, optical drawing. So uh, actually, what is uh, uh, near to eye display? Why we need uh, that? Actually, we use uh, a micro display, which is like your laptop, except this is very small less than one centimeter, pixelize it, and we uh, magnify the image of it. Then when you look, this is the eye, when you look to the display, it looks like big. This is the basic concept of near to eye optics. Of course, the lens, the collimating lens is here. It could be very complex. And the eye is positioned at a distance, what we call the eye relief. This is the most important parameter for smart glasses, the distance between the last lens and the eye. The second important parameter is the eye box. What the eye box is an area here where your pupil, the eye pupil, could move while you still see the image. These two parameters uh, are uh, the two uh, basic parameters for the design of the, the smart glasses. Actually, uh, today the eye relief is about 20 to 25 millimeter, and the eye box, the area where you still see the image, is 10 by 7, where your pupil, if you are looking for bright image, is 3 millimeter, is less, is about 4 millimeter. So uh, the other requirement for the ergonomy is the transparency. It means you cannot have, of course, uh, if you are using a non-transparent display, the transparency is zero. However, if you would like to use it in a mobile area, the transparency should be around 30% or using dynamic transparency. I'll be back to this point later. The weight means the weight for the whole device should be less than 100 gram and more important, distributed over uh, the head, uh, not like having very, uh, very heavy here, not heavy on the other side because you cannot support wearing something very heavy. Uh, since 50% of the population are wearing glass, or me even more in Asia, you need to put a correction lens. It means in the design of the, your system, you need to have the place to put a correction lens to, to see at the same time corrected uh, image and corrected uh, uh, your vision. So, uh, of course, what I'm saying, this, this implies a lot of uh, requirement for the design of the system. The other uh, requirement are also regarding the image position. It means here, let's say you have a glass, how you could use the glass. What is, will be the focus distance? 
what, what we call, the hookish distance is the virtual image position. So this is very important, for example, in indoor use case. Uh, for example, for medical use case, for surgeon, the distance is between 15 centimeter and two meters. They don't need infinity. Infinity in optics means far away, okay? For industrial use case, it's between two or four meters. So what the problem? The problem is there is discomfort, is virtual image location is different from working distance. It means if you have a glass adjusted to infinity and you would like to work them very close. So what's happened? What's happened is for monocular, uh, you have right eye, let's say you have right eye, uh, the display is at the right, and you have nothing on the left, you have right eye, left eye rivality. This makes a discomfort if image location is very short because your left eye is looking uh, very close and your right eye, where the image is display, is the image is away. This discomfort will be uh, I mean, the discomfort, uh, you, you could solve the problem if the image is far away. But if it's too small, there is a problem. So we have solution for that. But I'm, I'm just explaining regarding all the product existing today. Nobody care about this. And the user finally is, uh, are not happy with what they have in hand. Uh, here, for example, uh, we design a system and uh, flip view means the display you can flip it up and down to allow the user to look to the display but not having this problem of discomfort. Uh, for binocular, there is other problem. For binocular, for example, uh, of course the brain have the same image. There is no problem of rivality. But the problem here is at which distance you focus. Normally, the glass are adjusted for one distance. If you are looking very close or far away, there is strain on the eye. And uh, finally, uh, the military uh, worked out this, this problem and find that the conversion issue is more annoying than focus issue. It means if you don't adjust the focus for binocular, it's really uh, a problem for, to, for you using them uh, at, uh, at the false distance. Okay. So the other, the other requirement uh, is uh, regarding the brightness. Of course, uh, uh, how the system works normally for near-to-eye system is different from this projector, for example. This projector works for light flux. It works for the brightness, which means it's only the brightness value that has important. Today, for if you'd like, a smart glasses to, to be to working well outside uh, in a mobile world, out, outdoor, you need at least three to 5,000 nits. Just to give you an example, if you look for the sky, uh, clear day sky, it's 10,000, okay? It means for uh, avionic, if you are in the cockpit, you need to have a kind of smart glasses. You need at least to have uh, maybe 15,000 nits. However, if you are in a dark uh, situation, it's very, very low. It means you need the display to allow this change, okay? So, what means high brightness? High brightness means more power consumption. This is why is one quality of the display is its ability to provide high brightness at low power. We think this is the best value. Today, we are far away about this. Another way to manage the brightness Glasses normally they have a light sensor who sense the outdoor brightness and automatically adjust the brightness in order to uh, to to, uh, to have low brightness indoor and high brightness outdoor. Uh, one way also is to use photochromic lens. This is what we did with our first product. Photochromic lens is you are outside with the UV, it get darker like sunglasses, so it helps to uh, reduce the the power consumption. Anyway, so what the situation today? The situation today is uh, it's very difficult to have very high brightness. So, so there are some, so some manufacturer, they are cheating a little bit. It means they add kind of, uh, I mean, uh, 
not really 100% transparent glass, a kind of filter. And this filter gives you the impression that the brightness is very high, where it's very low. So uh, this had advantage to, uh, to, to reduce the outdoor scene brightness and to increase image contrast. However, it could be a problem in certain situation. For example, in, um, uh, in some uh, in car, in, in Avionique, the max, you, you cannot use some equipment with less than 70% transparency. I'll give you an example, if the intrinsic brightness of 500 nits, which is the case of uh, this product, if you use a sunglass filter of 10%, it gives you impression that the brightness is very high where it's very low. So uh, this is a problem if you are uh, in some situation where you cannot really use uh, uh, a transparent filter with very, very low transparent filter. Uh, for example, sunglasses transparency is between uh, 10 and 15 percent, okay? So now, quickly, I give you some uh, classification of what we uh, about the optical technology for AR and VR. Uh, let's start with VR. The VR is a very simple situation where you have one micro display, optics, and you collimate the light. So uh, there is some, let's say, good product with very good resolution like Sony. So here, this is micro display. It's not really smartphone, okay? For Oculus, they are using smartphone and a couple of plastic lens, very low cost, low quality. The pixel per degree is very important. Why? Because you have field of view, FOV, it means field of view, it's 110 degree. And if you calculate how many uh, pixel per degree you have, is very low. In this situation, you could see the pixel. So for your information, the, the limit, uh, uh, the eye limit is about 60 pixel per degree. It means if you put uh, more than this, it's not necessary, but if you put very low, it's not good because your image is uh, pixelized. You have other products like Samsung. So all these products, the optics is not really a key. There is uh, the low, low barrier to entry. The value is mainly on the soft that makes uh, conversions and low latency. And of course, this, uh, these devices, they are no uh, AR capable and cumbersome. If you look for what we call see around, it means they are not transparent, okay? However, you could see around. So these products, uh, there is some, some of them on uh, this show. Uh, they are used mainly in uh, like uh, uh, in the, in the industry, uh, but you cannot do AR with them because they are not transparent. They have very uh, small field of view uh, and low resolution and small eye box mean you need to adjust them in front of the eye. If not, you lose the image. Of course, they are not AR capable. Sorry. They are not AR capable. So the optical system is very simple. You have a micro display, maybe a mirror and a lens. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let's focus on true AR. What true AR means, means uh, you, uh, what, when you look to the outdoor, you are transparent. So this is first method, what we call free air propagation optics. Here you see the eye, the micro display. These three systems or product all are the same. They are using folding mirror, either curved, the mirror in order to allow the see-through. What the problem here? The problem is that the cumbersome here and uh, the mirror are subject to dust, uh, get dirty quickly. And since you are crossing back and forth semi-transparent mirror, the efficiency is very low. Here again, there is no, uh, there is low barrier to entry uh, and uh, you see here also, I am not talking about the, how, how beautiful is uh, uh, the, the glass. Anyway, so uh, the other type of uh, famous type of uh, technology, optical technology, what we call light guide. 
What the light guide is, it means you have uh, your eye here, you have thin plastic or uh, a glass uh, light guide, and the micro display is uh, in the temple with the optics. So it allows you to keep your vision clear and to have the transparency here. So there are several technologies, several types. I start with a diffractive technique that's used by HoloLens, Sony. HoloLens actually are using Nokia because they bought Nokia. And Nokia developed the technology of um, diffraction grating. It's very complicated stuff. It's slanted one nanometer scale uh, grating with actually they are using three, three, uh, three uh, uh, plate like this actually four, huh? and the problem with the diffractive technology, uh, and Sony actually, they are using hologram anyway. So the, 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 the problem with this technology is uh, several problem. As I said, it's very complicated to produce, is exotic. Second, it generates color issue. You cannot make very large field of view because uh, the, let's say, let's say the, the, this is the image, you see here the white is bluish and here the white is reddish. Uh, it's uh, the problem also very low efficiency. It means there is a lot of reflection each time and you lose light. Uh, the other type of technology called polarized, mainly uh, Lumus, so you have uh, a reflector embedded inside the light guide. It works very well. The problem with this technology is its uh, cost for production and it also it's not scalable. It means you need, to, just for example, you take one wafer, another wafer. Normally there are six wafers. On each wafer you put something like 30 to 40 layers and then you cut them, you polish them. So there is, there is a lot of yield issue and it generate cost. Um, the other technique all these techniques here are, we call, reflective techniques. So they are using a uh, reflector, and uh, there's no problem of color issue. Generally, they could use also uh, molded plastic. So I start with Google one. Uh, the Google, the, the micro display is here, the reflector is here, and it goes to the eye. The problem with this technology is uh, the, the, the field of view here is small and the light guide has 10 millimeter thick. It means if they need to enlarge the field of view, they got two centimeter thick. Epson has another type of it where there is one reflector, however, is curved. Okay, so this is the reflective technology with one mirror. The, the technique used by OptinVent is uh, array of small mirror that allows you to get the same thing here except with thin light guide and the advantage of this is generate monolithic light guide that we we already mold it at low cost so it has some advantage so this is we believe the future of smart glasses is is there uh, so uh, talking about future there is some thought and some uh, judgment. So first we believe light guide method will dominate because it have better clearance and better looking. The looking is very important for, for uh, uh, wearable product. Uh, diffractive technology is still limited in field of view. This is physics. And this light guide will integrate the light feed that I'm going to talk about. Regarding the field of view is not uh, religion. I mean, the field of view should be adapted to the use case. So we believe today informative industrial will be satisfied with monocular, moderate field of view. Medical may need binocular with also moderate field of view because they are looking to their field. They don't need, they are not doing gaming. Now for game, for video, maybe we have field of view very large. And if we go larger, then it's uh, enabled transformation of VR market to uh, AR market, which is actually the main uh, objective for big company. Uh, but generally speaking, on all this design, what we call fibrillation, take an, into account the specificity of the eye will, will, uh, will, be, will be done. 
For the micro display today, everybody using this kind of liquid crystal in silicon because it's on the only technology that allows you to have high brightness. Uh, the other technologies start to be working like OLED, which is, has the best, bright, the best contrast, the best image quality. So up to this level of brightness means indoor it should be used. The other technology here, like MEMS, here it uh, need laser, very good quality laser. But today uh, uh, the problem is, uh, I mean, still to, related to laser quality and cost. Uh, laser, white laser, RGB is not a uh, cost effective uh, solution today. Uh, the LED, uh, there are other technology called LED based micro display. It means it's not OLED, it's LED at the, big, at the pixel level. And with this technology, actually, we could have very, very high brightness. We solve the brightness issue. And um, even this technology is expected to be used for Pico projector. Okay? For the light source today, we are use, I mean, major companies are using white LED or RGB LED. This is for color filter display because it has the best ratio efficiency and cost. The cost of white LED is less than uh, 50 cents. For RGB, you need to have RGB LED when you use uh, color sequential. But the problem here is you generate uh, color breakup. Color breakup, if you already look to the projector, this one is color breakup. If you do like this with your hand, you see RGB color. So here you need to have high frame frequency. Uh, you need also, if you have very large field of view, the color breakup phenomena becomes very, very important. So it's an uh, additional requirement. Laser source could be a good alternative also, especially for high brightness. Actually, it's applied for head-up display, which is very close to the design of, um, of the glasses. Uh, now, a few words uh, before to finish about light field. So what light field? It's, uh, you, you heard a lot about this uh, technique. So uh, this I presented here, the eye. The light field means the ability to display a pixel A in one plan and pixel B in another plan um, uh, in real time. So this is what uh, another company uh, working on it. This is not, I mean, new, but um, what the problem, the problem in all, uh, to, to be able to display natural vision, like our vision, where the eye is constantly changing focus from one plan to another plan. Today, when you wear a smart glasses, you see all the content in one plan, okay? So uh, the requirements are very tough because you need to generate high-speed image at pixel level, uh, of course, at... Uh, at least 50, 60 images per second. So you have a computing challenge. And for the hardware, uh, it's also a lot of requirement, means you need to stack display, to stack stage of display. By the way, uh, today I visited a company, British company working on holographic, that's interesting in that field. Uh, yeah, also, in order to, uh, to do what we call light field, you cannot just have two uh, to uh, focus distance like another company is uh, doing in, in, uh, in the U.S., you need more. You need at least 10 of plan to have realistic rendering. So the, my message is today, as a specialist in this domain, today the current uh, footprint, integration feasibility for what, what uh, for example, Magic Leap or other are doing is in question for consumer product because uh, we are not there yet. Uh, there is a lot of investment, and we didn't even see a wearable prototype, right? So uh, optics still the key here, and as any company working with smart glass, of course, we are working on that. Uh, the other requirement also regarding uh, the, uh, the field is to hide virtual information when you display it behind real opaque object. It means you need a camera to scan your environment and to define where is the area at which distance in order to uh, display or not the information. So I just wanted to share this information with you or this thought and uh, thank you for your attention.